In this problem, we're going to look at another situation, but in this case, we're going to look at a situation where there's more than one force acting on the object that might play a role in its circular motion. All right, so in this problem, we have Batman driving around a sharp turn of a radius of only 30 meters. Uh, if the Batmobile it has a mass of 700 kilograms and goes at a velocity of 16 meters per second, the question is, is can he make the corner that is, has a radius of 30 meters when the maximum static friction on the road is only 0.45. And then the answer, the question says to explain uh, the your, whatever answer you come up with with your calculations. So this is a more typical problem where in the past we've been talking about have versus need. This is the first problem what we've that we've come to so far where the have versus need really matters. Like you actually have to think about have versus need to answer the question. And this is where if we don't think about have versus need, students will get confused. But we are still going to go through this process like we do with other things. We'll just you'll hear us talk about have and need and a little bit earlier than we normally do. All right, so let's start with drawing a free body diagram. As always, I think a head-on view it would be good. Again, this is a car driving around in a circle, so that means it's static frictional force that is pushing it towards the center. We have normal force up and force of gravity, which are equal. And so Batman, the Batmobile is turning this corner, and we want to list our variables, and we're trying to figure out this static fr maximum static friction is the only thing providing the force inwards. And what we want to find out is, is this going to be enough, basically, to let, allow the car to go around uh, at 16 meters per second, a 30 meter radius circle? Our variables that they give us, they give us the radius, the mass, the velocity, the coefficient, and we are looking for this right here, right? Can we really know whether or not it will make the corner? So how do we answer something like this? Well, we have static friction pushing it inwards, and we need a certain amount of force dependent upon the radius and the speed. So the question is, is if we calculate how much there is, how much force we have and how much we need, we know that we will go in a circle. Those two are equal to each other. Or in the case of static friction, right, if the maximum static friction is greater than how much we need, then we're good. Because static friction could be less but it definitely is not going to be more. So let's take a look and see how our haves and need compare. So we're going to do F net equals MA, right? Where F net is the have and MA is the need. We're going to do our same thing we always do where we replace things, right? So on this side is static friction, on this side is MV squared over R. Uh, we're going to replace static friction because I don't know that, but I can calculate it. I know static friction is mu times normal force. I also know that normal force in this case, normal force equals force of gravity, since it's not accelerating up or down, I can make those substitutions. Now at this point, I know mu, I know m, I know g. Over here, I know m, I know v, I know r. I know everything. What do I solve for? Well, the answer is I'm not solving for any particular thing. I'm just comparing to see how these two sides compare. Right. This is what I have. This is what I need. If I need more than what I have, it's not going to go in a circle. If I have more than what I need, honestly, technically, it wouldn't go in a circle either. But remember, since this is maximum, I could actually have less than the maximum. This is just the maximum possible I could have, not actually how much I have. All right. So if I do my math, plug in my numbers and solve, I can see that I have less than what I need. And static friction can never be bigger than this amount. This is the maximum. Therefore, this uh, car will not make the corner and it should spiral outwards. So in short, Batman does not make the corner because you have less than what you need. All right, let's take a little bit closer look at the have versus the need. So the question is, did he make it? The answer is he doesn't make it, right? Because the have is not equal to the need. However, we could also tweak the question to say, what could we do to get him to make it? So what if Batman, because Bat the Batmobile has weird things like this, has some weird, weird grappling hook device on the side of his car that shoots a grappling hook onto like a light pole or something that gives him an extra added force inwards. The problem is he doesn't have enough force inwards. So what if, what if he gets help from another force. Static friction is insufficient. So we help it out with a grappling hook tied to a light pole. And that should add an additional force inward. So with that, we say, hey, we have a new force tension. And the goal is, what can we add 
inwards to get these two to actually be equal, right? So when we add this other force, instead of F net equaling just one force, like we've done this whole time, F net will equal a combination of forces, right? These two are working together. So I would do tension plus static frictional force. And so we do this just like we do any other circular motion problem, but F net doesn't always have to be one particular force. It can be a combination of forces. And it's important to recognize that like in this case it is. So with that, I can carry this forward and all of these equations change, right? I just add tension to each term, each equation. I'm going to get rid of the other stuff because that's no longer true. And this time now what I'm doing is I'm solving for tension. I know this did not equal this. So I'm going to subtract this from both sides so that I can find out how much tension is required. And the answer is around 2,000. 900 newtons. So if I have additional force, I can actually get the have to equal the need. This is a, a question that could be on a test, but that throws students for the loop. Just the way it's worded and this, this whole idea of like, what am I solving for if I have all the variables? But thinking about this question in terms of how much do I have and how much do I need really allows us to be more successful with these types of problems.